All right, gang, John Oaks here with Hangsters Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location, yet again to bring you another addition to our inventory. Today we have a 1969 Pontiac Firebird here that we're going to go over with you right now, show you what kind of condition it is, show you the options that we have on this particular car, and then we'll go from there. Uh, basically, we have this. This is kind of like a Kind of like a maroon exterior or a matador red would be the Pontiac color basically. Um, you can see that our car here has the stock steel hood. It's got the 350 emblems on it and that is what's underneath the hood. Uh, of course we've got the Firebird fender emblems on it. You also have those uh, front fender accent pieces here in the front fenders both sides. Uh, bright work on the car. When we get to the front end you'll see that grill surround. You'll see the wheel lip moldings right now. You'll also see the drip rail moldings and the lower rocker moldings here, all of which are shined up really nice, all nice and straight. So again, everything really nice on this car. We've got a driver's side mirror also done in the chrome. So that kind of helps offsets all that bright work on the car. And for wheels and tires, um, they kept it kind of in that period of time with the Keystone Classic wheels. Now they are 14 inch wheels, uh, and again they're chrome steel wheels, BF Goodrich radial TA tires on these, all four corners. We've got 205-70-14s uh, up front, 215-70-14s on the back. All of the tread is in excellent condition. Door fitment, as a matter of fact, all the panel fitment as we walk our way around is really nice. But you can see the doors here, the gaps both on the front side, the back side. You can also see that they've went ahead and put the door edge moldings on here, the door edge guards, again, to give it a nice little touch there with that bright work. We'll open our door, take a peek inside. We've got an all black vinyl interior, front bucket seats with headrests, the wood grain steering wheel, factory dash with all factory instrumentation in it. They did add a B&M floor shifter in there. But again, it works really, really good. Seat belts, both front and rears in this car, so you're gonna be good and safe. We'll close it up back again. Glass, you can see glass is in good condition here too. We don't have any chips or cracks in the glass, neither in the door nor in the quarter window either. As we walk our way back, the quarters look real good on the car too. Everything's nice and straight. All the body lines line up on it. As we get to the back of the car, first thing you're going to see here is this nice chrome rear bumper here. Your trunk lid here fits very well. You can look at the gaps all the way around. Pretty uniform with your gaps. Rear window's in good condition. And the molding the whole way around the rear window is also in good condition. Now we'll go ahead and open our trunk as we always do. So we can take a look at that. There we go. So trunk lock works. And you can see the underside of the trunk's painted just exactly the same as the rest of the car. You've got the jack instruction decal here right in the center. Uh, your hood hinges and the spring. Obviously all that stuff works very well as it's holding the trunk lid up. Your trunk seal the whole way around is in really good shape. It's nice and soft the whole way around. They've got it cut and it meets right here in the center. Trunk's nice and dry also. You can see we've got a full-size spare on a steel wheel in the trunk. We also have a set of floor mats. And again, we always elect to leave those out so you can see the condition of the carpeting on the interior. Uh, but they are here for your use uh, if you decide to buy the car. Trunk's good and solid. Painted the correct black and aqua trunk spatter paint as well. Then we'll come around to the passenger side of the car. And uh, basically, same thing. You're going to check and see... Make sure that everything is nice and straight, which it is. Body lines all line up. Again, you're going to see the condition of the wheels and tires on this side now. Glass also still all in great condition. No chips, no scratches, no cracks here on your passenger side door, nor on your quarter window over here. Again, bright work. The wheel lip moldings, your drip rail moldings, even the rocker molding on this side are in really, really good shape. So again, we'll open this door up just so you can get a, a feel for the interior from the passenger side. Again, 
Seat uh, upholstery is in good condition. There's no rips or tears. Carpeting, same thing. No rips, tears, no fading either. And again, the dash also, the dash pad looks to be in great shape. There's no cracks in that either. Again, all the doors shut really easy. You don't have to use any effort whatsoever to get those open. Like I said, body lines line up. Your accent trim here on the front fenders. And of course, the Firebird up here on the front. Now, as we come around, the Firebirds, um, they have that, uh, I guess you would call it like the Enduro style bumper on the front. Okay, you've got the quad headlights up front. And then your Firebird, you don't really have a bumper. You have more so this uh, front grille surround basically here, right on the beak of the car here. So again, that's in great shape, polished up really nice. The grills in there look really good. You see the Pontiac here also. Down below, you'll see it's got the black front air dam on it as well. Now as far as the hood, again, we just mentioned as I started here, this is a stock steel hood with your 350 emblems up on top, your uh, gaps the whole way around meet up very nice, uh, elevations with the front fenders are really good too. And again with your Firebirds, you've got this black molding, that's what was factory on these cars the whole way around that front nose piece, looks really good there. So we're going to go ahead and open our hood up now. And that's what we'll talk about next is what we've got underneath the hood. So let's go ahead and get that for you. Okay, so with our hood lifted up, first and foremost, the hinges, the latches, all that stuff works really good on the hood. Underside of the hood's painted up black underneath. The whole entire engine compartment, for a matter of fact, is all black. Now as far as the motor goes, this is a 350 cubic inch Pontiac motor. However, it's not the original numbers matching motor though. I believe when we ran the numbers on it, I think it's a 72 350 uh, cubic inch motor. Starting at the top, we've got the chrome, kind of the factory or stock style air cleaner sitting on top. Right underneath there, we've got an Edelbrock 1406 series carb. It's a 600 CFM carburetor. It's got the electric choke on it as well. That is sitting on top of an Edelbrock aluminum intake. Now I know it's all painted underneath here, but again, it is aluminum intake. You've got the, the cast heads though. Of course, you got your iron block there too. Uh, but again, 72350 is once in here. They did upgrade the ignition system on this car too. They upgraded to a Mallory distributor. Got a Mallory, uh, what do they call it there? The Pro, uh, Pro Master Coil. So it's a, an upgraded coil. It's going to deliver a little hotter spark. It's also got a set of Excel Super Stock 8mm plug wires on her. Again, all of that to uh, deliver a little hotter spark for the car. Uh, as far as the exhaust, stock cast exhaust manifolds. Dual exhaust on it with the Flowmaster muffler, so the exhaust is going to perform. It's been upgraded also. Uh, we've got power steering, power brakes on this car, disc up front, drums in the rear. Behind this motor for the transmission, we have an automatic, but it's the Turbo 400. So a good, stout, strong uh, automatic transmission. And then for the rear, we've got a 10 bolt rear, but it's the big 10 bolt. It's the eight and a half inch ring gear. It's got a set of 411 gears in it. And that is a posi unit on that rear differential. So as far as the car goes, we've been around the outside of it now, inside and underneath the hood. We're next gonna go ahead and get this up on our lift so that we can show you the underside of it, show you the suspension, steering, and all the driveline components from the underside. All right, we're underneath our 69 Firebird now, so we're gonna go un un you know, underneath it here and tell you exactly what we have as far as components for suspension, steering, and our driveline, and then we'll finish up by talking about the frame and the floors a little bit. So, as far as the suspension, we do have just all stock suspension up front on this vehicle. We've got the front sway bar here. Sway bar frame bushings are in good condition, as well as all of our sway bar end links too. Those are all in good shape. Uh, again, just pretty much stock shocks and springs for on the front of this car. And the steering, this is a power steering car. So our center link here, all in good shape. Tie rods are in good shape. The little rubber dust boot covers, those are all intact with these. Now you'll notice our, our uh, tie rods here, 
Looks like they've got a little bend in them, but that's the way they are. That's the way they're manufactured. Both sides are identically made like that. Uh, all the ball joints on our upper and lower control arms, those are all in good shape. And you can tell everything has been greased and maintained very well in this car. And braking components on the front. Now this is a power brake car. It does have the disc brakes up front, drum brakes out on the rear of the car as well. Uh, so that's pretty much our steering, suspension, and all that up front. Now as we work our way back, I'm just going to kind of jump in here with the drive line here and we'll discuss that as I walk back. So again, uh, the engine here, this is a uh, non-original motor. It is a 350 cubic inch uh, Pontiac engine. Um, I believe after running the numbers, I think it's like a 72, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we've got a turbo 400 automatic transmission. Uh, so the transmission pan and the oil pan on the motor all look to be very dry. We've got uh, the inspection cover here for the flywheel and the uh, torque converter to cover all that up. Our cross member here for our transmission, that's in good condition. The actual mount also in good condition. The seals on the back of the transmission, that is all dry as well. Of course, we've got our drive shaft here. This is a balanced drive shaft. So again, that's going to help eliminate any kind of vibrations that might be in the drive line. And then we'll finish off the drivetrain here with a 10 bolt GM rear end. This has a 411 gear and it is a posi unit. Now the other thing you notice as I walk back through here, exhaust system. Starting at the front, that starts off with a set of stock cast exhaust manifolds. Uh, looks like fairly new pipes here as far as the exhaust system goes. Then we have a set of dual Flowmaster mufflers. So again, Flowmaster, they're going to perform well and they're going to sound very good. Then we also have the tailpipes here too, up over top of the rear end, and they exit out between the leaf spring and the quarter panel in the rear of the car here. Now rear suspension, it's multi-leaf rear suspension and probably just a set of like stock style shocks for on the back of the car. Running gear as far as wheels and tires now, um, these are Keystone Classic, these are chrome steel wheels, they're 14 inch both front and rear, and they're in great shape. BF Goodrich Radial TA tires on all four corners also. Now the sizes are a little different, we've got 205 70 R14s on the front, and 215 70R14s on the rear, just to give it a little bit of difference there in the rake of the car, and the tread like brand new on all four tires here. Now to the floors and the frame. Frame all looks good and straight as I see back here. Um, the uh, body bushings here, the body mounts, those are all in good shape. They're not uh, squished uh, beyond where they should be. They're not cracked or dry rotted. The bolts look new in them. Um, so the frame all looks good, subframe looks good. Uh, of course your dog legs here on the back end of the car up over top of the rear end housing, those all look good too. Good and square, nice and straight the whole way back through. Floors, actually the floors look really good on this car from underneath here. Now you do notice they're uh, undercoated a little heavy, uh, but that was just the way they were when the car got to us. Again, these are all just your stamped uh, steel floor pans. Uh, and you can see all of the ridges in here, all the stamping lines are in them. Uh, so again, it's all the correct stuff. I don't see any patching. I don't see any holes to, to speak of either in the, in the floors. It looks all good here. Um, our pinch welds and our rockers down both sides, those all look good. Of course, you've got your fuel lines and your brake lines all routed right along the sides, right along the rockers there till they get back to the rear of the car. The fuel tank, it looks like it's fairly new. There's not a mark on it, nice and smooth and shiny underneath there. Um, and then of course this car has the emergency brake. It's all hooked up and functional. So you've got all your correct J hooks, all your cables, uh, balancers and everything like that all hooked up and ready to be used. So that is the underside of our 69 Firebird. Oh.